and welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome to the big one. It is time here for Barca against Real Madrid in El Clasico and this is a game here that early on in the season it is a real defining game for both teams who have not had it easy this season. Barca's struggles are well documented but Real Madrid too have had their own problems and this is a game that quite clearly both teams have to win and we are going to be discussing everything you need to know ahead of this clash. So let's get to it because kickoff will be coming to us on Sunday afternoon there at 4.15 p.m. local time. This is prime time viewing on Sunday between Barca and Real Madrid. And what is really, really good news is that we are expecting a packed can't now for this one. Barca are planning a mosaic. It's been a long, long time since we've had one of those. The fans are coming back in. And like I say, over 90,000 fans are expected for this one. And it couldn't have come at a better time. Because let's not forget here that in a game like this, we are going to see Classico debuts for the likes there of Memphis Depay. Never played this fixture before. Young Gavi, Eric Garcia as well, which in itself, it's a massive game. It is the game as a kid that you dream of being a part of. But it's not only that either, because also for these players and many other Barca players too, they haven't quite felt this atmosphere before. They haven't played in front of a Pat Camp Now crowd because of the pandemic, because of all those restrictions. That only now we're being able to experience this again. And even Ronald Koeman is yet to experience a Classico with fans as the Barca coach. The best will rise to this occasion. The best will thrive under this pressure. And this is a game that always separates the best from the rest, and Ronald Koeman says his team will play without fear. All we have to hope is that they actually do that. Because obviously, guys, coming into this game as Barca fans, and of course, I'm sure as Real Madrid fans, it's always a game that you look forward to. I absolutely love being a part of Clasicos, being able to experience this here as a Barca fan. All the build-up, all the emotion, you know, just before kickoff, you know, waiting for this clash to begin. It's special. It is a game, like I say, that is famous throughout the world. We are all aware of that. But coming into this... There is negativity. I think certainly there from Barca fans. I think the mood was set during that midweek game against Dinamo Kiev. It was an empty performance. They gave us nothing really there for us fans to get behind. And as a result of that, the mood isn't great coming into this game. You look at Real Madrid, meanwhile, they are feeling a bit better. They had a thumping Champions League away win in midweek against Shakhtar. They come into this game, I think, with a much calmer feeling there. Angelotti, he sort of emits calmness, I feel, not only to his players, but also the entire situation, especially when you consider what Barca have been going through on and off the field this year. But that's what makes things very interesting for me, because actually, when you look at these two teams side by side, it's actually fascinating, because in the Champions League, yes, Real Madrid there, they're top of their group, they're feeling good, they got one more win. They did, of course, lose the Sheriff, we can't forget that. They've had their own upsets this season, they've scored plenty more goals in the Champions League, but... If you look at La Liga, although there's a big difference there in Barca being 7th, Real Madrid being 3rd in the league, there's two points between us. There is a difference there of just a single win. That is all that's separating these two teams in the league this season. That's not that much. And especially when, for me, you look into those stats further, you actually look further into those performances. Because Real Madrid, on paper, yes, have scored 8 more goals than Barca. They've absolutely dominated us there in the goals department. But when you look at the expected goals... They're overachieving. What they're actually creating is not all that different to what Barca are. What they have been doing is making the absolute most of those chances. We're going to go on and talk about the danger men of Real Madrid very, very shortly. But you also look there at the defensive stats. Barca have conceded less goals in La Liga. Now, Real Madrid now will have back Furlong Mendy. That's a big, big boost to them. They've been desperately trying to get back Danny Carvajal as well. But believe me, there's holes there too. Just like with Barca, Real Madrid can be exploited. But, like I say, in front of goal, and especially they're thinking about our defence, the fact that we are susceptible there to teams getting at us, creating chances, getting space in front of goal to take on shots. When you are looking at goal scorers this season, look no further 
than Karim Benzema, who has been, honestly, even looking here from a rival's point of view, he's been sensational. 11 goals that he has in all competitions so far this season. Vinicius as well is starting to add some end product to his game. Asensio as well up there for Real Madrid. And that's the problem. When you look there at Barcelona, Memphis, Ansu, and then Pique. Ansu's just come back. Pique's a defender. All the pressure has been on Memphis there. And there hasn't been a great deal else. We're not really sharing around the goals. We don't have an abundance of players who can score. When you look at Real, they definitely pose more of that threat. And it's the same with creativity. Barca there with Memphis, Des, Frank de Jong all on two assists. Again, you look at Benzema's numbers. Benzema this season, not only in terms of goal scoring, but he's been creating them to eight assists already for Benzema in all competitions. Vinicius is there again, and Alaba as well, chipping in with a few. And I do think we're going to have to find a defensive level that we haven't seen from this Barca team this season to keep out Benzema, and especially keep out Vinicius. But honestly, guys, when you're talking about that negativity coming from Barca fans, I also do feel as though maybe it's not only linked to this season only. I think actually when you're looking at previous Classicos, when you're looking here at fixtures in seasons gone by recently... We've not done well. You know, we have not been at the same level that we previously seen in this encounter. It seems a long, long time ago now that we were destroying Real Madrid at the Camp Nou, then away at the Bernabeu. You look at the last five games here. Of course, last season, we lost 3-1 at the Camp Nou. We lost 2-1 away. Then, of course, before that, Real Madrid again the upper hand. And the last time that we actually managed to win a Clasico, our last win against Real Madrid... Two and a half years ago. It's been two and a half years since we've won this game. That's unacceptable. For a Barcelona team, we demand more. We expect more in this fixture. And we haven't won in this game at the Camp now since Luis Suarez, of course, hit a famous hat-trick in a 5-1 win. But I think when we do move on, guys, to the Barca starting eleven, what we do have to do here is pick a team that can go at Real Madrid. This is a game that you grab your opportunity and you go for it. There's no good coming into a Clasico here and just accepting your fate, going in with your head down, sort of feeling as though, oh, maybe we're not quite ready for this kind of game. No, let's go out there and do it. We have players in this team who can hurt Real. We have players in this team who are absolute quality. So let's see them. Ter Stegen in goal for me. Stick here with 4-3-3. Mingetha at right back. Eric Garcia partnering PK. We need to see a raise in level from Eric Garcia here in El Clasico. Jordi Alba is going to play through pain-killing injections. Not ideal for Barca, but he was brilliant against Dinamo Kiev. And hopefully he's going to be able to get through this game. Sergio Busquets there is going to play at the base of midfield, surrounded by Gavi and Fred. Kitty Young, what a moment this is going to be for young Gavi there, starting in a Barca midfield in El Clasico. And then when you're looking at the front three, I would again play Serginho Dest, who can not only help us there with that width go forward and make sure that we have options there on either side, but he can also help Mingetha with that defensive work against Vernicius Jr. Then there's Memphis. And then there is Ansu Fati from the start. There have been some suggestions in the media that there could be a lot of interchanging between those two players. Ansu could start on the left, but actually could end up down the middle as the striker. We did see that in last season's Classico at the Camp Now, when, let's not forget, he scored in that game. Ansu can do it again. This Barca team can do it, but they've got to play without fear. They have to go out there and own this game and show us a level that maybe we didn't even know that they had. Because indeed, guys, in the end, when we're looking at the predictions, I know that you guys are not feeling great about this game. Nearly 40% there of the voters believe that Real Madrid are not only going to win this game, but win it comfortably. And look, I can understand that. Given what we've seen from Barca this season, given the inconsistency, given the problems that we've seen highlighted in so many games, honestly, I can understand that point of view. But I think at the end of the day, before that whistle goes, before the game gets underway, we're all going to be there the same. Even if you think that Barca are going to come into this game and suffer against Real Madrid, when that whistle goes, we'll be together. We'll be hopeful. We'll be believing that maybe we can make something happen, achieve something that we haven't done this season and haven't really done under Ronald Koeman full stop. Will it happen? We 
are about to find out. Expect the worst, maybe, but hope for the best. Please leave your predictions in the comments down below, guys. What are you expecting from El Plastico? What would your team selection be? And what is your score prediction? Let me know all that down below. And of course, guys, I thank you very, very much indeed for getting involved here with all the Classico build-up. I will see you tomorrow after the game has taken place. And let's see what unfolds. But until next time, guys. As always, Vishka, El Barca.